and welcome to the show. I am your host, Tracy Tim, and you are watching The Nth Degree TV, the place to be to take your career from stuck to unstoppable. I want that so badly for you, and I know that you do too, so let's dive right in. This week on the blog, we dove into the idea of seasons of life and seasons of career and how sometimes those seasons can nature the seasons of nature. For instance, if you're here in the United States, except Arizona and Hawaii, then you just experienced daylight savings time. This is a semi-annual practice of advancing the clocks during summer months so that evening daylight lasts longer while sacrificing normal sunrise times. Typically, regions that use daylight savings time adjust clocks forward one hour close to the start of spring and adjust them backwards in the fall. Here in the U.S., we use the phrases springing forward and falling back to remember which is which. And when I was working with some friends and figuring out the content for this time of year, uh, one of my more clever friends said, why not ask people whether they feel like their career is springing forward or falling back? In addition to wishing that I had thought of this myself, I thought that it was brilliant. So here we are today. Days are getting longer, nights are getting shorter, summer is getting closer, and winter is slipping away. Thank goodness. And now we have to ask ourselves, are we getting any closer to the career we want, or are we slipping further and further away? So here are a few hard-hitting, soul-bearing, slightly annoying, but definitely necessary questions that you can ask yourself to diagnose whether your career is springing forward or falling back. Number one, am I happier than I was a year ago? A lot of business professionals and career coaches aren't going to like this initial question, but I think it's so necessary. If you're anything like me or anything like my clients, you want success, but you want it to be sustainable. You're not willing to sacrifice your mental or your physical health for a job or a career that looks flashy to everyone else, but leaves you an empty shell of a person at the end of every day. So one of the best ways you can diagnose your career and find out if you're making meaningful progress forward is to first assess your mental well-being. By asking yourself, am I happier now than I was a year ago, you'll find out how you really feel about your career situation. Even when you're working really hard toward a goal and perhaps even overwhelmed with the amount of work you're doing, if it's the right type of work for you or something that you're passionate about doing, then your mental state is definitely going to be better off than it was before. Number two, am I a better friend than I was a year ago? Again, you might think this question has a little, if anything, to do with your career, but you would be misinformed. The degree of satisfaction and engagement with your work is directly correlated to the quality of your relationships outside of the office. Just ask anyone who's dated or married to an, a workaholic or someone who hates their job. When we spend inordinate amounts of energy at work pretending like we like what we do or turning ourselves inside out to be successful, then we have that much less energy to put towards our relationships. By asking yourself if you're a better friend than you were a year ago, you'll be able to measure your, your level of career progress from an objective third-party perspective. It's also a refreshing way to look at your work. By analyzing how your career impacts the rest of your life, and most importantly, your relationships, you'll be able to assess long-term sustainability of the work that you're doing right now. Yes, of course, there will be times when you have to put your head down and really prioritize work to get where you want to go. But if you have fewer friendships and close relationships than you did a year ago, then you might want to start reevaluating the toll that your work is taking on your quality of life. Number three, am I proud or excited to tell people about my work? Here is a real litmus test for any behavior the rest of your life. If you don't wanna tell people about something that you're doing, you probably shouldn't be doing it. That's the bare minimum for your job. If you don't even wanna tell people or you avoid the conversation altogether, that should be a massive red flag. The secondary test is to see whether or not you light up when someone asks you about your job. Sure, you're gonna have days where work is hard. Everybody has to eat a shit sandwich now and then. But if you can't honestly tell someone you're proud of what you do or excited about what's coming next, there is a big problem. By asking yourself about your level of pride and excitement, you separate yourself from all the logical things that might be keeping you in a job that you hate. Money, time off, benefits, an expense account, 
you name it. These items, while not trivial, blind us to the realities of our own mental well-being and our true assessment of the meaningfulness or enjoyment of any given job. If you don't love it, it's not sustainable. Ask any entrepreneur who's worth his salt. If you don't feel passionately about your business or the problem that you're trying to solve, you're going to be tempted to give up. At some point, you're going to have to pay the price. So save yourself the pain and the heartache and find something you just can't not do. Number four, am I only doing the easy or convenient activities to get to my goal? A few years ago, I got a life-changing voicemail from a friend and fellow entrepreneur named Will. Will had spent some time with the illustrious Tony Robbins and came back fully and insanely on point with some valuable and actionable advice, not the least of which was defining the key indicators of success, aka the actions that move the needle the most toward your goals. Many of us settle for the low-hanging fruit in our careers and our businesses, replying to email, weekly or monthly reports, and responding to inbound calls or inquiries. Very few of us take the time to define the key indicators of our success and prioritize those over the needs of others. By asking yourself, honestly, whether or not you're pushing yourself to do more or you're living in a world controlled by other people's priorities and expectations, you'll get a very clear picture of your progress. Look at your day and count the number of things that you did for yourself and your career and the number of things you did for someone else. I'm not saying that you shouldn't be collaborating or helping other people, especially your coworkers. I am saying that you need to prioritize your career goals to get to where you want. And if responding to other people's emails is the first thing you do in a day, you can be doing so much more. And there you have it, just a handful of questions to assess whether your career is springing forward or falling behind. Use these questions as a gut check, but be kind to yourself. Life is full of seasons and we're bound to experience a valley here and there. If your answers to these questions disappoint you, just vow to yourself that this time next year, your answers are going to be different. So now I want to hear from you. What do you think? Do you feel like your career is springing forward or falling back? And are there any other ways for you to diagnose your career that I might have missed? I would love to hear your ideas and opinions, so please, please leave a comment below this video. Also, you can get the discussion going on our sweet little space on the World Wide Web, tracytim.com. Come on over there and leave a comment below this blog post to get the creative juices flowing. While you're there, I want you to make sure that you hop on our email list where you can receive our free guide that's all about knowing when it's the right time to quit if you hate or just feel meh about your job. There you'll find the eight essential questions that you will need to ask yourself to find out if it's time for you to take the leap and start doing something that you really, truly love. Did you like this video? I hope you did. I really enjoyed it. If you like this video, like it. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out some other videos that you might find helpful. And that's all we have for today, but I'm so excited you were here and thank you so much for being here. Remember though, now is your time. With a little bit of work and a little bit of help, I do promise you that we can take your career from stuck to unstoppable. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next episode of The Nth Degree TV. For instance, if you're here in the United States, except for Hawaii and Canada, no, Canada, <laughs> it says Hawaii and I said Canada. We have to scroll that back. <laughs> ah, I'm a dum-dum. <laughs>